Alrighty, I think we have uh, all the commissioners that we are expecting this evening with Bob uh, having an orthopedic issue dealt with today will not be available tonight. So I would like to uh, call to order our annual board meeting. Uh, the first item uh, is remote attendance and I don't believe there's been any request for remote attendance. So um, <coughs> moving on, I would like to uh, transfer the, the chair to the board secretary, Tim Bartlett, for uh, swearing in of newly elected commissioners and election of officers. Great. Tonight we have one commissioner that was elected April 4th, 2017, for a six-year term, and that is Nancy Bell Coleman. Stand up and we'll do that official swearing in. And there hasn't been a request for a recount <laughs> or a recall, and I haven't been fired? Not like Comey? All oh, right. Comey and Coleman. Oh. Okay. When we get formal here, we'll have you raise your right hand. Oh, gosh. It will go with the oath script. I'm Nancy A. Del Coleman. I'm Nancy A. Del Coleman. Having been elected to the Office of Commissioner of the Urbana Park District. Having been elected to the Office of Commissioner of the Urbana Park District. In the County of Champaign in the state of Illinois. In the County of Champaign in the state of Illinois. Do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Commissioner to the best of my ability. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Commissioner to the best of my ability. You're official. Okay, good enough. Thank you and welcome. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah. Yeah, this, <clears throat> this is my farewell tour. Next, we have the election of officers. The board will elect a president. Once the president is elected, <coughs> they will take back over the duties of the uh, meeting and follow through with the election of the vice president. Are there nominations for the role of president of the board of commissioners in the Urbana Park District? Yes, I nominate Michael Walker. Second. Okay, first and second, any discussion? <laughs> uh, move to elect Commissioner uh, Michael Walker to be board president. Ayes and nays are sufficient. Aye. Aye. Oops, sorry. I'll say aye. 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 Nays. We have the vote. Michael Walker will be our next board president. Thank you. Michael, I'll turn the meeting back over to you. Okay. And thank you to my fellow commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for another fun year. Honor. An, another fun year, yes. We're sidestepping. <laughs> Are there <laughs> any nominations for uh, the office of vice president of the board? Could we nominate Bob since he's not here? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you I, you I, may I, nominate anybody you I want. Think <laughs> <laughs> I think I would nominate Bob Stewart. Second. Are there any other nominations? Well, hearing none, the, the motion is, is before us uh, to elect Bob Stewart as our vice president. Aye. Oh, Oops, yes. sorry. All, all in favor? <laughs> I just want to get this done. <laughs> all in favor, aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. That we'll try and be quiet for the rest Carries of the unanimously. Time. So. We're now moving on then to appointments. Um, this is an annual, again, as part of our annual meeting in action, um, we have appointments for um, the board secretary and the nomination there is Tim Bartlett, Allison Jones is assistant secretary, Dick Percival as treasurer, Matt Deering, uh, Banner Park District Attorney, and Allison Jones, uh, or the designee of the business manager, should continue as board recorder. Martin Hood, Freeze, and Associates to continue uh, to be the district's auditor. Now, uh, if there's desire to change this slate on the part of, of any commissioner, you uh, are welcome to propose something different. Otherwise, is there a, a motion to approve this slate? I move to approve the slate, or do I need to read? 
Read the names. I can do it. Okay. <laughs> I, moved, I, I moved to make the following appointments. Board Secretary Tim Bartlett, Assistant Secretary Allison Jones, Board Treasurer Richard Percival, Attorney Matt Deering, Board Recorder Allison Jones or Designee of the Business Manager, Auditor um, Martin Hood, Freezy and Associates. Second. That's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me that down. carries unanimously. Um, next item of business is uh, establishment of committees of the board and to appoint commissioners to those committees. Uh, we have, by our policy manual, I believe, a um, board policy committee and a finance committee. And we have had an ad hoc committee on updeck planning. There has been a suggestion by staff that we change the status of that ad hoc committee to just be a standing committee as well. Um, and then there's the question of populating those committees. Mm -hmm. So um, board policy committee has been Meredith and LaShonda. Are, are you interested in continuing on those? Yes. And the finance committee has been uh, my, me and Bob. I, he's not here to defend himself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the committee. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's willing and interested to continue. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I'm I'm willing to continue on that. I'm also would be happy to have somebody else who who, who might take interest step forward and 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 do that. I think it could be an interesting uh, exercise. But as I say, I'm I'm willing to continue serving. And lastly, uh, the UPDEC Planning Committee has been Nancy and LaShonda. Are you, are you both willing to continue doing it? Yeah. Okay. I changed the name on this though, so it can't be that. ad in hoc <laughs> Yes. So is there a motion then to? Uh, <clears throat> to make these appointments? I move that we establish the following committees, Finance Committee, Policy Committee, UPDEC Planning Committee. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do I say that yep. since it's yep. been changed? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries unanimously. And next up is action to appoint uh, Commissioner to the Urbana Parks Foundation uh, as part of the Urbana Parks Foundation bylaws. Um, our executive director is ex officio a member of the foundation board and then we can make our own nomination, which I am a little unclear on whether it actually has to be a commissioner, but um, I, it has traditionally been so. Assumption, Michael, is if, there were, if we didn't have that slate filled, certainly we have at least staff representation. You know, the board would like to be available. Now, um, Meredith uh, has ably served us for at least three years in that situation, and I think has, has requested need. that she would uh, like not to do that for the coming year. Uh, do we have another commissioner who would be willing to to be our Parks Foundation representative? I, I, would, I would be willing to, but I think it's a, it's a I, it's a little um, incestuous, so I think I shouldn't I, do I, it. I, well, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to appoint tonight? It does. It does not have to happen tonight. I don't know. Suggest too, if we needed more time, we yeah. Come back and pick that up. Yeah. We tend to do Um, I, I would like to suggest that we do that. Yeah. Wait till June. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it seems seems reasonable. To There's have. no May meeting, so. Yeah. Okay, well then. I mean, we had it. So. It's already been had. Yeah, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. fine. So that's something that we got to keep on our uh, tickle list for the for next month then. Okay. And then uh, action to appoint commissioners as UPDAC representatives. You have traditionally served in that role, Nancy. Are you um, eager I'm willing to keep, to keep doing, doing it? it? But I would certainly, yeah. um, and if anyone else <laughs> would really like to, 
I'm happy to step aside or I'm happy to serve as alternate or, you know, I would suggest if LaShonda's not got anything else to do, she he could, um, <clears throat> but we've worked in tandem for this year and if, if mm -hmm. you're willing to do that, we could, we could keep doing it. That would be great. All right. So do we have a motion to uh, appoint Nancy and LaShonda as, uh, I don't know if they are you co-representatives. <laughs> I, I move to appoint Nancy and Lashonda <laughs> as the uh, uh, UPDAC representatives. So I guess we have, second. Yeah, I guess second. we can second right. Earl. <laughs> well, okay. The the chair will take the privilege of seconding that motion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. And that carries unanimously. Uh, last action to appoint a representative to the Urbana TIF Joint Review Board meeting. Um, we typically um, assign our executive director uh, to that and also one commissioner. And I, I have served in that role for longer than I care to remember. Um, <laughs> I'm certainly, I certainly would be willing to do that again. Oh, then I move we appoint you as the <clears throat> the board's member on the um, TIF, Urbana's TIF Joint Review Board. I second that. Okay, that's moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries unanimously. Okay. And that exhausts the uh, agenda of our annual board meeting, so... I declare the annual meeting adjourned and let's uh, call to order the regular board meeting for the month of May. And uh, first item here again is remote attendance and I presume there's no request for remote attendance. So um, next up is either to accept or modify our agenda for the remainder of the meeting. Is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented or alternatively to make some modification. I move to accept the agenda as presented. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries unanimously. So we're now up to public comment. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the board at this time? I would like to make a comment sort of stepping out of my chair to say thanks. To Dick for coming to the meeting tonight and for being our treasurer for all these years and for willing, being willing to take on yet another yet another year with us. It's good to it's, yeah. It's nice to have you. <laughs> all in Thank favor. You. Okay. That's it. Any other comments from the public? Seeing none, then uh, I believe there's a uh, new staff introduction today. Well, greetings everyone. Uh, for those who may not recognize me or see me too often or know me, um, I'm Joseph Schmidt. I'm the district's aquatic facilities maintenance supervisor. And I'm here this evening to introduce uh, a new employee, Daniel Crabiel. Uh, Daniel will be uh, our new and first ever uh, aquatics maintenance tech and construction department tech. So he's gonna be splitting his time between two departments assisting in the aquatics <coughs> maintenance department and with uh, Keith Eworks, our construction supervisor in the, on construction projects. So uh, D Daniel has made a, a really big impact on the success and productivity of our operation and we're really happy to, to have him here. It makes a really big difference, like I said. Um, Daniel last month completed, successfully completed his uh, certified pool operator coursework. Oh. You know, that's, a, that's a certification that you get from the National Swimming Pool Foundation. Um, so that I think really helped him sort of, you know, realize the dynamics of, of what we do. And I, I'm just really happy to have him here and he's, he's done a great job. So I, I appreciate everyone's efforts in helping bring him here. And uh, 
with that, I'll just turn it over to Daniel. Yeah, so my name is Daniel. Uh, from Urbana, I uh, went to UVI and went through their RST program. So kind of excited to work for the Park District finally. I've participated in the programs, obviously, at a much younger age. But uh, yeah, so I'm just thankful for the opportunity that's come up and appreciate working for you guys. So, What do you like to do for fun outside of working? Um, I like to bike and play soccer and things like that. You're not a swimmer. Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, I can swim. <laughs> and, and Dan from Daniel played soccer all the way through at the park district, didn't you? From yeah. Age? Yeah. Oh, wow. And for those of us with old ears, could you pronounce your last name again? Yeah, Crabiel. Crabiel? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We, we, we recognized uh, um, within the last year that with two aquatic centers, uh, uh, the new one would, um, starting to show a little bit of age and the older one, the indoor aquatic center, became more and more of a challenge. We really need to have more help in, in the uh, aquatics maintenance realm. We obviously made a commitment to the public to maintain the, the, the new outdoor aquatic center at a high level and Daniel's going to ensure that we can do that. Within construction, you may remember we formerly had a, an assistant for Keith who did construction work with Keith and so it was a long goal to restore some of that capacity. And so Daniel, during the pool season, will work mostly with Joseph, some with, with Keith. That is the outdoor pool season and the winter uh, vice versa. So it'll, he'll get some exposure to both aquatics and construction and we're, we're really excited to have him. Good, good. Thanks guys. Yes, just, yep. in, just in case you're leaving right away, I do wanna say how happy I am to see that there are new arm things, shower arm, whatever you call those things in the 80. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, that, 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 right now we're really busy with the outdoor pool, but that's one yeah, of our yeah. top priorities. Just that it's that it was on the list and in writing made me very happy. So. Um, as soon as we get a minute, we'll, we'll, we'll get them up, and I hope they're beneficial to everyone. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it's, yes, it's, it, it's good. It's just, I mean, Corky will tell you, I'm always coming up with new ideas for <laughs> <laughs> pool which makes them happy or not, I don't know. I like to think oh, it does make me happy. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really gl I'm glad. I'm glad to see that that's moved up to the top of the list. Great. Yep. Well, thank you for both for coming out this evening. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. moving on to the uh, UPDAC report, we have a written report in the packet. I don't, I don't know if there were any comments about the last meeting. Um, I don't have any comments about the meeting, but I would like to um, say that <clears throat> I don't know if you've all seen Brad's um, questionnaire and the results from his questionnaire that he sent out to UPDAC members. He's he's really doing a, um, a great, a, he, I mean, he's doing a great job just running running the meetings and seeing that things go well, but he's taking some interesting initiatives to, to get feedback, which I think is really important. So I'm, um, I'm more than happy with, with this. Um, effort that he's made, and I think it's going to be a real benefit to us. So, do, do we know how many UPDEC members are going off this year? Through about the same or number, five to six. Five to six. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Any other questions or comments on UPDEC? Hearing none, then let's move on to our consent agenda. And for those <laughs> listening in at home, uh, the, <laughs> the rules of our consent agenda are that we, we, we pass a number of uh, non-controversial items uh, in an omnibus fashion on the consent agenda for this evening as presented is the minutes from uh, the April 4 st study session the minutes of the April 11 regular board meeting, action to accept the philanthropy report and gifts with gratitude, uh, accepting the monthly reports from administration, planning and operations and recreation, approval of the monthly paid accounts payable, and then action on resolution 2017-06 to appoint uh, the Urbana Park District FOIA officers Action on resolution 2017-07 to appoint uh, the UPD Open Meetings Act representatives. 
and action on resolution 2017-08 to appoint the UPD ADA coordinator. And lastly, um, action on annual appointments and assignments. And I believe there was a list of some additional ones, uh, a, a, a variety of things that are were also included in the packet here. Now, under our rules, uh, any single commissioner can have any item removed for separate uh, discussion and action. Is there anybody wishing to uh, pull anything from the consent agenda this evening? Seeing no indication of such, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda in an omnibus fashion? I move that we accept the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded, and under our rules, uh, there is to be no further discussion. So uh, there's a roll call vote, and we'll start to the right here. Aye. 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 Okay, those items have all been approved in an omnibus fashion, and that brings us to the reports section of our agenda. Money, 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 money. Yes, that's me. Yes. <laughs> um, well, we've come to the end of our fiscal year, so tonight I'll be talking about the year-end results for FY17. Um, the first report that I'll be discussing is called the Fund Balance Report. It is the first of two budget reports. This report shows the receipts and expenditures for the prior 12-month period, the budget for the current period, and the preliminary unaudited results for the 12 months ending 4-30-2017. So um, as you can see on every single page of this report, this is preliminary information, and um, it is subject to change, but that actually means it really will change. Uh, there, particularly in the expenditures section, there's a lot of payables that we book after the year end um, as bills come through that were related to work that occurred before the end of the year. You know, invoices come in later after the work is done. So anything that kind of happened in April, we might not get the bill till May or June. And so all those things um, <coughs> continue to trickle in and we keep booking them back to FY17 until we're done. Um, Katie, and I'll talk a little bit about that in my report. Is there a limit as to, I mean, if somebody forgot to send you in a bill for, you know, five trash cans and it came in a year later? Yeah, um, I mean, typically after you've kind of closed the books with the audit, if something were to come in, it would basically become a liability of the current year. Uh, you know, if it was really a large item and you didn't know about it, I mean, there's kind of a problem there that you didn't identify that as a liability. But um, if it was a large item, you could always do a prior period adjustment to your audit it, but there has to be like certain financial thresholds met to make that warranted. I mean, because the situation you're describing does occasionally happen. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, it's something that usually typically I'll call our auditors and talk about it and we'll make, you know, the right decision. So, okay. um, but there's a relatively easy way to deal with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but we do really try very hard to identify all the payables that we possibly mm -hmm. can. I mean, that's a huge part. So we may not have actually written the check right. and that's okay because, you know, if you're, for example, if your project got kind of held up um, with some lingering items at the end, for example, and it wasn't <coughs> quite done the way you wanted it and you want to hold the contractor accountable, mm -hmm. you don't want to write them a check. You want to hold out mm -hmm. paying mm -hmm. them until the project is done, sure. but it's still a payable because <coughs> the majority of that work was done in the fiscal year. So you still have to gotcha. mark it as an expenditure. You just don't write them a check yet. Sure. And so that that's kind of that identification process that we go through. And I spend most of the time I spend talking to Caitlin about it because um, it's almost all project related. Um, you know, the ongoing things, utilities sure. and service and things like that, those are all kind of right. just kind of take their course. Yep. Okay, so, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the highlights of this report. So starting on page one, this is called Someone, and it's all funds except for the Capital Improvements Fund. Revenues for this period were $8,808,000, which is an increase of 418000 since March. Expenditures were $8,159,000, which was a change of $471,000 since March. And we have a surplus at the end of fiscal year 17. This means there was an excess of revenues over expenditures of $649,000. And a net change in fund balance shows an increase in fund balance after 12 months of $163,000, um, uh, which will continue to be reduced as remaining payables clear in May and June. And I did a little bit of look back at FY16's payables. And so in 
um, you know, May and June of FY17, we made payments equal to $106,000 that were related to um, a FY16 expenditure. So, you know, around $100,000 is going to be that ongoing operating items that we'll probably expect to clear in the next couple of months. And I don't really think that amount will change much. Um, the amount for capital will change. We paid $188,000 uh, in capital payables last year, but I already have that much in the first week of may so we're with caitlin we're working on all of those payables and, and getting them paid two hundred thousand to come yeah so it'll be more which is good so get them paid so moving on to the capital budget page two is what we call sum two and it shows only the capital improvements fund revenues for this 12-month period were two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars and expenditures were six hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars Expenditures exceed revenues, which means there was a deficit of $383,000. And after the total of other sources of $1,196,000, there is a net increase in fund balance in the Capital Improvements Fund of $813,000, which, like we said, will continue to spend down the rest of the year. And um, it's actually really good that Caitlin's saying that there's quite a few payables, because if you notice in the second, in the middle column, we were budgeting to spend down the fund balance in the Capital Improvements Fund by $400,000, and here we are adding uh, 812. And this capital budget is a zero budget. We, we budget to spend every single dollar of this entire fund, but there's always like a carryover amount that you haven't quite gotten ready to spend yet. So typically there's a fund balance in this fund of around a million dollars, and we don't always budget to spend spend every single dollar every year because we're not going to but there's um <coughs> there's that carryover of around a million but right now it's 1.8 million so we really do want to get some of those payables down so there's that you know 150,000 in checks that we wrote this week there's the other 200,000 that Caitlin says is on the way and then we'll see what else comes so, so. Katie, I, I also expect that some of that is the transfer from the general fund that yeah that that increased so, it so that won't be mm -hmm. yeah. yes yeah. Um, the same as the bond money Right, so the 500,000 transfer in is part of the net change of 411,000 negative that we were expecting. So it's already in that number. So we just, we just have a lot of projects that we haven't finished yet and that's okay. So, um, and we'll get there, so. Sum three is all funds district-wide. This is sum one and sum two added together. And uh, note that the ending fund balance for the entire district is $6,858,000. And like I said, as those payables come in, that will decrease. Uh, our revenue is pretty much set, though, because we have a zero-day revenue recognition policy that the board set. So basically, any revenue that we don't have by April 30th goes into the next year. Um, other districts have, and we used to have, uh, you can have up to like a 60 day revenue recognition policy. So that means any revenues that come in 60 days after your fiscal year end can still be counted in your fiscal year's revenues for the FY17. But Dottie, bless her heart, she's just a genius. That means you have to count the first property tax payments, the June property tax payments, and it's a huge mess. So um, it's really very a smart way to do it, to have a zero day. It causes us some challenges with um, like end of year donations and stuff that you really want in your FY17 that you had budgeted for FY17. But if it's a matter of timing of that person writing you the check, it can be really difficult because you don't want to nag a donor, you know, but it's like this is our fiscal year and it's the cutoff, you know, and we really don't have any wiggle room with that cutoff because of the board's policy. So it's one of our challenges that we work through. So, and enough about end of fiscal year. So I can move on to the next report unless you have any questions about the fund balance report. <clears throat> the next report is the budget analysis with history. This report shows a historical comparison of the same 12 months of the current year and the prior three years. So we're at 100% of the budget, which is a number you can compare to throughout the report. And you can see for revenues that we've completely hit all of our revenue targets. And uh, if you go to the middle of page two, you can see that total revenues and transfers in for this period were $12,632,000, which is 101% of our budget. So we exceeded our budget by 1% of revenue. So that's really exciting. Um, and we did really well. And just if you can look at the individual line items and see that um, donations and grants did really well. Um, property taxes were 
what we expected and so were transfers. So uh, the other items performed really well. And um, you can also see if you move on to the middle of page three, that total expenditures for the year were $11,656,000, which um, with a surplus at the end of April of 976,000, which also matches the fund balance, uh, net change in fund balance on page three of the previous report. Um, I don't have anything else to say about that. It will continue to change as noted on the report, but um, the board will receive additional information about the expenditures for the end of the fiscal year on um, with next month's board report. You'll actually get uh, the um, interim checklists that come with um, the consent agenda. There'll be two sets next month. There'll be a May set and an April set. So items that were paid in FY17, you'll have a whole nother set of P card and check payments. You'll see it, it happens every year, but and just a reminder that you'll see four of those reports next month instead of two. So you'll be able to see the items that we're clearing that we're talking about tonight. Next, I'll talk briefly about the treasurer's report. The treasurer's report is a report of the amount of cash that the district has on one day, April 30th, 2017. All 25 funds are listed with where the cash is invested. Um, for a grand total of $8,718,026.61. On page two, the first section lists amounts that we have in interest-bearing accounts. So of the total $8,718,000 we have on hand, $6,915,000 is out in investments. We had a little over a million dollars in CDs um, mature out of our Busey um, uh, investment services account in March and April and when they matured they kicked over into the Chase savings account so they're still represented in this particular chart but I am working with so you don't even see Busey investment services on the list anymore because we don't have any investments with them currently at um, in the month of at the close of April we didn't have any um, but I'm going to be working with them in the next couple of weeks to analyze which um, funds have cash available for investments and then reinvest so um, when you see the May report, I'm hoping I'll have it all done by the end of the month and he'll be back on there. Um, let's see. The next section of the treasurer's report lists disbursements. Vendor payments match the paid accounts payable report in the consent agenda for a total of $429,000 in disbursements for April. And the final section lists interfund loans. The loan between the English Fund and the Indoor Pool is a rollover loan for current cash flow needs at the Indoor Aquatic Center. Um, and with that, I present the Treasurer's Report to you for approval. I move we accept the Treasurer's Report for audit. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Is there any <coughs> further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries unanimously. Okay, great. I have two more reports to discuss. The first one is the supplemental report of cash. This is a report that has the same information as the first page of the treasurer's report, but it groups the information by expected use rather than by fund name. So the uses are daily operating funds, restricted special needs, and restricted gifts and donations. So of the $8,718,000 available, 1420 is restricted, leaving 7298000 available for spending. And finally, I'll touch on the activities, the highlights of um, the activity of the capital budgets. So the 2017 capital budget report, there were revenues received for Crystal Lake Park and also for memorials and spending occurred on recreation small equipment. Um, in the 2016 capital budget this month, Reimbursements were received from the Champaign Park District for UPD's ADA expenditures that we give um, uh. for uh, CUSR or for our special recreation fund tax levy. And spending occurred on ADA projects, which was the Nature Playscape Path work and construction crew projects, technology, operations and recreation, small equipment, and UPD's share of capital expenses at the Aquatic Center, which was pool vacuums um, that Joseph oh, bought right. at the end of the year. Um, and the, there's also a, a um, star next to 
um, trail projects. Says the the um, which was Nature also Place Cave as well. yeah, it was divided between um, ADA and trail projects for the Nature Place Skate Path work. And finally, um, on the 2015 capital budget, revenues rece were received towards Nature Play, and a contribution was received towards from IDNR towards the Rain Garden Bioswale project. And uh, we also received additional money from CPD for the ADA account uh, in this budget as well on the same check. And spending occurred on the Nature Playscape, the sediment basin sediment removal, and on the rain garden bioswale project and on the water level con control structure for Crystal Lake. And now Caitlin and Derek have some updates for you on capital projects. We do, we have a lot going on in <laughs> April here um, before we really get into the summer season uh, and everybody hits the parks trying to get a couple of construction projects uh, finished before then. Um, the first piece of good news that I have to share is that um, we did our second online auction of a piece of equipment. Ooh, yeah. So we did the wide area mower last year because we'd only been offered a trade-in value of $5,000. And you might remember that we uh, raised $13,000 by doing an online auction with a local auctioneer through a national um, website, Auction Time. Um, so this time we took our skid steer, which our Bobcat skid steer, which was in excellent condition. You know, we had upgraded it because um, we had two different functions that we wanted our skid steer to be able to serve. One was that we wanted it to be on tracks to decrease the impact, the impact on the ground of, of our parks. And the second was we wanted it to be able to run a forestry unit to you know, work on our honeysuckle problems in, in various areas and other uh, uh, forestry and arbor needs. And so our skid steer was in excellent condition. We just needed some different utility. Um, so we were offered a trade-in of $12,500, which was okay. Um, but through some research, we uh, saw that we should be able to do a little better on auction time, at least comparable, if not better. And I'm happy to say that last Tuesday, it auctioned for $27,100. Wow. Um, some of which is, is fees to auction time and fees to our, our local auctioneer, Ori. Um, but I think that our net gain was $25,300 wow. on this auction. That's so really nice. It, it was excellent. Um, so that money comes back into the capital budget. Um, it will help pay for additional vehicles. Um, we have two more bids of mowers that will hopefully um, be in front of you guys for approval in June if everything goes well. Um, and, and so, you know, this, this, this is a, a, a nice new system that we have available to us, a nice option. We still don't think that we're going to do this all the time. Uh, for those mowers, for example, we have trade-ins, and um, we had an estimate for the trade-in values already, and we looked at what the comparable um, auctions are on auction time, and they were about the same. So with, with that information, you know, we would probably say, okay, let's not use staff time and resources. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll accept the trade-in as, as probably comparable to what we would do on an auction. Is, it, is it much extra work for you to put it on auction? Not a lot. You know, that's oh, good, why they good. have these lo local auctioneers um, is because they know the ins and outs of the system. Uh -huh. So we sign a contract <clears throat> with <throat> Ori um, <clears throat> and he handles, he comes and takes the photos. He puts the website together. Oh, he great. handles the advertising. They have, a, they have a whole system for how it, it's advertised. You know, mm -hmm. the, you advertise for three weeks and the auction itself, it's not like eBay. There's a live semi-live auction for 48 hours, 48 or 72 hours. So it's advertised for a long time. People get to see, you know, do I want to bid on this? And then the bidding is actually a very short window. It's interesting. It's, it's been a fascinating process, and, and we're finding that more and more of our local municipal agencies are doing this. Uh -huh. um, and so, again, we won't, we won't do this for everything that we've got, sure. but, but we are strongly considering it every time we have a piece of equipment that might be yeah. Well, it's, not, it's nice to have that alternative. It really is. It really is. It's it's a it's freeing in no, terms of our practices. No, good for you for practices. finding that. That's really clever. Credit goes to Denny. Denny. Yeah, back when we did the wider <laughs> Denny, our mechanic. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. when we did the wider mower. We asked Denny, you know, do you think this trade in's a good value? He goes, well, I, I use this site quite a bit because he purchases all sorts of equipment through auction time, mm -hmm. and he looked and said, I, I think we can do better. And sure enough, great. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, good for him. Staff ingenuity. It was great. Yep. Um, in terms of construction that's going on right now, uh, the Larson Park tennis courts have, uh, I believe, been completely dug up at this point. Mm. And so we are going to get an entirely newly constructed court 
from um, cross construction and new fencing, as well as some significant drainage improvements. They anticipate that they should be done with their portion of the work um, within about two weeks, but then um, the asphalt is going to need a 30-day cure window before it can have the final like court finish and colors put on it. So it will take a little longer than, than we had anticipated. It'll probably be about mid-June before it's uh, a fully completed tennis court again. But, but it, is, it is basically on schedule. Um, moving forward, the weather is holding up for us. So, so that's been good. Um, the, uh, I think we talked about the sediment basin work last time. So at this point, we're on our end, we're kind of in holding on that project as the sediment dries out at the landfill site in temporary storage. And then we'll begin testing it again probably in June and then August to see, you know, what, if anything, needs to go to the certified waste facility. So, um, so luckily, you know, that's, that project has calmed down and, and we consider it incredibly successful. Uh, the lake is finally filled back up. We did unfortunately delay the opening of boating. And so I, I appreciate Corky's and uh, Corky's staff, mm -hmm. Janet, especially at the lake house for their flexibility and understanding on that, that, you know, much as we got seven inches of rain in the last week and a half, that wasn't guaranteed and they needed to make a call. And so, uh -huh. so it'll open, it'll open, uh, boating will open Memorial Day. Weekend. weekend, Memorial Weekend, sorry, the Saturday, um, I think. I might be lying. Friday. Friday, okay. Um, so the but, seven but the lake is refilled now. The seven inches was enough to fill it up? It was. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that, seven, inches, yeah. seven inches of rain across the 160-acre watershed was enough That's to get it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, other things happening in Crystal Lake Park include um, the 901 demolition, which has uh, proceeded. It's mostly down at this point. Um, it, that building is being almost entirely reused. I am so pleased by what Miller Enterprises is doing. They actually um, are working with somebody out of Ohio who is almost taking the building whole cloth. Um, they're coming and picking it up on Saturday. So they very carefully took down the entire back half of that building, packaged it up, and are sending it somewhere else. So <laughs> that material, very little of it is going into a landfill or a dump site, and um, that makes us incredibly happy. So, yeah. Interesting. It's been impressive. <clears throat> we did have a neighborhood meeting before we mm -hmm. uh, started the demolition process, and I'd say most everybody from Franklin Street attended and a few from Broadway and had some good mm -hmm. discussions. We had... Uh, renderings from the lake project and plans up to talk about as well, and um, it was a, it was a, a good opportunity to, to get to know our neighbors even better. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I bet I know who that was. And people were very excited to talk to us about the lake. Those renderings are uh, get some nice attention good. and comments. Good. Um, and the last thing is that um, the bioswales up by the Anita Purvis Nature Center um, have gotten most of their plug plantings installed. Um, so in the middle, so all three of the grass medians are being um, replaced with bioswales. Um, the center of each of them is, is essentially going to be a sedge mix um, to help with filtration. And on the caps and the very center around the manholes, uh, the storm sewer outlets that go directly to the saline is going to be a mix of forbs and grasses, prairie drop seed, purple cone flower, butterfly milkweed, uh, shooting star, blazing star, things like that. Um, so those plugs had to wait until the weather was warm, you know, here the, the second week of May before they could be planted. And, and so that work began yesterday. It's mostly completed. Um, we have found that, mo that actually both of the native plant nurseries that we're working with right now are having a difficult year with native plant plugs. Um, with the uh, unusual winter we had where it was very warm and then very, very cold in, in part of February and then warm again right away and rainy, you know, um, one of the groups lost their entire crop of drop seed. And for um, where we're working with right now, um, NCAP, their suppliers don't have butterfly milkweed or purple coneflower available yet. They will be ready towards the end of this month or the beginning of June, but they've just, they're, they're very small. Their growth has been uh, a little compromised by the weather that we're having. So, uh, so we're being patient. We understand it's not their fault that the, the plants aren't growing as well as expected, um, and they will be back to, to finish that portion of the project. But, we, but the way that it looks right now is already very exciting. Um, they brought some gorgeous shooting star that are all in bloom. So, um, 
So it's, it still looks a little under construction at the moment, but I would say by, um, by summer's end, it's really going to start looking like a bioswale, which is exciting. And I'm going to let Tim talk about the Nature Playscape opening during his director's report. So those are my capital projects updates. Wow. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on that? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um, moving on then to the executive director's report. As you know, April's been a very busy month. In fact, <clears throat> starting usually March 1st, staff's shifting gears into mm -hmm. the next busy season. So there's a lot of <coughs> interesting <coughs> things, um, events going on. <coughs> Just a quick mention, to recognize Katie Rowland, she's completing all of our accounting course work. I have, I have to take one exam by Sunday. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, thanks, Tim. So, great achievement. Just wanted to not forget that. Going uh, through the calendar, though, on April 22nd, as Caitlin mentioned, we had the Friendship Grove Nature Playscape opening. Um, I'm sure we've been in different groups talking about how wonderful it was. Staff can add into because I know everybody really participated, but had over 500 people. Just a great day, great weather, expected rain, cooler yeah, temps, and it yeah. was a little bit warmer. And the sun and oaks just came out, and we had a great day. Staff did a terrific job with all the activities. It was so busy. We had a lot of the donors there, so I really mm -hmm. please. Did you want to mention any wrap ups or things you heard? Or the thing that, that struck me most about the opening was that it was, it was a two hour long event, four to 6 p.m. And there, are, there were kids and families who were there at the beginning and still playing when I left at six. So the staying power at the Playscape is, is something um, that really warms my heart when I see it, that, you know, that you know, we weren't really totally sure um, how everything was gonna go until you have kids playing on it. And the fact that families felt comfortable staying there for two hours playing uh, was really wonderful. Could you just get used heavily if you haven't been up there? You'll know oh yeah, that's people. what I was going to ask. Yeah, is it great. you've seen a lot of people up there? Good. Yeah, yeah. And Go ahead. We we uh, we were visited by um, our representative from my parks. They, they do an <laughs> annual appraisal uh -huh. of um, the district, and uh, we'd already worked with them closely on nature play and asked them to come back and take a look at it again. And a few tweaks he would suggest that we we, we take a look at, and so staff is <coughs> meeting tomorrow. Thursday. Thursday. <coughs> recommendations and uh, <coughs> by and large he was very pleased he said it's much larger than, than most of the nature landscapes he sees most of them tend to be you know a rock able to <coughs> so I think he's he really impressed and, and appreciative of us of us involving him in the process from, from early on Just, just one question on that. I mean, it, you can already see a, a rut in the turf over the the tunnel. Is that is that going to be savable for the longer term? So, so we we always knew that turf over the tunnel was going to be a challenge. Um, we decided to invest in some um, some shade heavy <coughs> use tolerant uh, fescues that uh, for to to look really nice for the opening essentially. Um, and we were going to see how they held up um, to see if it was going to be practical to try to continue doing grass or, or you know, continue using um, sod and turf over that. I think it's very likely that it will end up as mulch, which is fine. Um, it, it, that's not a problem. And, and, and use is, is what's showing us what needs to happen on the playscape. So, and kids are just adore. They just run up that tunnel <coughs> and they roll right down it. It's it's been great. Well, that was sodded, right? It was. It was so there was no opportunity for it to take root before it was trampled upon by, right? Really? So, I'm, so oh. now is not a good indication. I would think no. you could attempt it one more time in a low season. Maybe, maybe We're I don't not, know. <laughs> We're not really sure what's going True. to be a good low point. season for the playscape <laughs> now that it's open. That's kind of part of the problem is that now it's. Now it just goes. Um, we are still ex expecting um, about a thousand plant plugs coming in um, and being planted around. So there's there's still more greenery and, and flowers and grasses to to join the playscape. 
I have some creeping Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty tough, and I have a lot. Yeah, that would be the ultimate test, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, it would. That, that, that sod we used is the same sod we used at the pool. It's um, turf-type tall fescue. We first learned about it from the turf experts on campus and its application at Memorial Stadium. And they put it in there, I think it was a week before uh, mm -hmm. their, their first year. <coughs> and it, it stood up. And this is in a small area where there's a lot of foot traffic. And so if anything's going to make it a nature play, it's that sod. And, We'll, we'll try to give it a little, uh, a little we'll see. encouragement, we'll see. Uh, but ultimately it may very well be wood chips. There may be a lot of wood chips in that nature place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, how would you keep the wood chips on that? Well, that's your, yeah. yeah. That's, Though so far, yeah. Um, if, if I may say, um, Allison and I had our daughters out there on Saturday morning and it had, it had rained a lot the day before and so there were a lot of worms coming up through the dirt. Yeah. And there was this one little girl who was going around collecting all the worms. And oh. as soon as every kid heard that she was doing that, suddenly these 10 children who did not know each other <laughs> were in this big clump all finding worms all throughout oh, the dirt. And it was just, it was one of those magical moments that's like, here is nature play. Here is social play that's happening spontaneously with kids who don't know each other of different ages and backgrounds. And it was wonderful. And then what did they do with the worms? The mother who the mother was who was kind of in charge um, encouraged them to put them all back. Oh. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> most of them were not alive. <laughs> they probably weren't real strong by then anyway. They were. They were. I don't. I don't think. I think mm. most of them were dead. <laughs> but the kids liked it. So biodegradable over time. Yes. Not so far. It's going to continue to be a, a real showstopper. Moving on the calendar, uh, April twenty fourth, we have the annual Special Olympic banquet. <coughs> yes, we attended. Great turnout, great time there. Um, put together a new a video, I think we sent that out to the board, so uh, everybody could see that. And of course, that was one of the key highlights was uh, sharing up the video. Uh, moving on with our busy schedule. Uh, April 27th, we had the Urbana Parks Foundation annual dinner. I think from a staff perspective, that was really <coughs> We really enjoyed visiting with all of our guests. I think everything was well, well planned. I think everyone had a good time, great conversation at every table. I think we made a special connection with every guest that came. So I think we found our, at least our uh, way with putting that, that event on. Certainly the Del Coleman Park announcement was really the super highlight of that evening. So of, of that wonderful gift. Uh, April 28th, following up, Arbor Day, Arbor Day we uh, every year work with the City of Urbana and other volunteers come together. This year we had the Gerber School, <coughs> Cunningham's Children's Home, <coughs> join us. That was the first time uh, with them. Had a nice turnout and a, a good day there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we recently on uh, May 2nd and 3rd had the 2017 uh, legislative conference. Um, I was only there for the second day, the official office meetings. You know, Courtney and Derek were there for the working dinner um, so that they can jump in. You know, we, we talked about a lot of things. Um, we debriefed with the finance committee last Friday. Um, lots of things could happen. It sounds like there's still some concern about tax freeze statewide. Not sure how many years. Is it a two year? Is it a five year? Um, I think probably overall the uncertainty while we you know, talked about a number of things like grants and what's going to happen with different funds and why can't we get things moving and what the holdups are. Um, it's, just, it's just where the state is right now. And uh, you know, we're hopeful that things get worked out. Certainly we are the small players. We're just on the receiving end of that. But uh, I think going every year, meeting with our legislators, um, you know, taking that time and effort to educate them on what's important. <coughs> We shared the report that Michael put together for the legislative breakfast that really shows our tax mm. amount. Mm -hmm. So I know that's always kind of a eye opener, you know, when people realize what you're actually receiving. Mm -hmm. um, and I, just to know that that is a difficult period right now. Uh, I think everyone's hope is could there be a budget pass? I think even on the budget, there's some optimism and then other comments of it may not happen. So this is where we are. So it, it was, yeah, so at, you know, at the actual conference itself, Jason Anselman gets up and presents, and, and one of his, he had two major thrusts. One of them was, you know, pretty much Michael's message that uh, as a park district, we were really limited, you know, to property taxes as our source of revenue, whereas 
uh, a lot of the other agencies that will be tax capped or are not. They've got other sources of revenue, and so that was something that we, we, we brought to the attention of the legislators we've met with. As other was, was um, make sure you're talking about minimum wage uh, and, and the impact of that on park districts because we employ so, employ so many youth, and, and we brought that up with them as well. And for right now, at least, it seems like minimum wage is kind of on the back burner, so huh. hopefully we can skip <coughs> by that a little bit longer. So there's a couple different thoughts from each side of the, the row. So somewhat $15 over the next three or four years. Some are saying 11 um, and so it's kind of gone wayside at the moment because they're both far off as far as where they'll agree to be. So sounds like it's going to be pulled. If there is a grand bargain, it's not going to be part of it. More weight and trying to be hopeful and continue to stay in touch with everyone. I should mention <coughs> also we had staff attend the um, day at the Capitol. I mean, Caitlin was involved with mm -hmm. that and other staff. We're maybe trying a new strategy of bringing new topics. This year we talked about the lake project. You know, if you do something every year, it kind of gets old. Mm -hmm. and you're not really sure why you're there. In fact, we stopped going um, for a number of years. It just didn't seem like the cost. <coughs> really resulted. Now I want to <coughs> come back to it. I think having a presence is really, it is important. They do make that day, you know, just for Parks and Rec. Um, but maybe we can mix up our topics and mix up the staff and give, give more people a chance to, to be there. Do you have good attendance? We, we did. Um, there, were, there were a lot of people who came through. You know, there were a couple of busloads of seniors um, who were visiting the Capitol that day, several school groups. Um, and then and then just staff um, and and several legislators who, who came by the tables um, and, and I will say the majority of the park districts are bringing their marketing crews and so they've got pamphlets and tea and and little small frisbees <laughs> and candy and kind of tchotchkes um, and and so a lot of the people are just going table to table seeing what cool thing they can get their hands on which is fine it's a fine strategy because, I mean, we are recreation. We're fun. We want people to enjoy their parks and, and remember that they're there. People would get to our table where we had zero handouts except for our program guide, and they would look at the pictures of the renderings of the lake and go, that's beautiful. What is that? Where is that? And so we ended up having some really strong conversations about stormwater drainage and lake restoration and native plant habitat. Um, with a lot of people who, who, who wanted to talk about it, who were fascinated by that. So I think we brought something really different to the event um, and we found it really valuable to get out there and at least talk about you know, why our projects are valuable and the impact that they're making in our community. That's just okay. what we want. Yep. That's making yep. the best use of that, that time. We appreciate that. And lastly, May 24th is the SUNA neighborhood meeting. I'll be going to meet with that group, all the city and Schools and parks are invited. And June 3rd is the Huna Day in the Park at Victory Park, their uh, neighborhood association picnic. So we'll be stopping by there. You can answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Jim. Uh, moving on to the President's report, uh, I don't have anything to cover other than upcoming meetings, and I'm seeing one. June 6th study session, is that actually going to be the topic? It looks very similar to one we had uh, a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Carry over. <laughs> yeah. um, we will be having a, we, we intend to be having a study <laughs> session, but I, I don't think that's going to be the topic. Right. Right. Um, and then June 13th uh, will be our regular board meeting for June, uh, and we will have the annual actions to annex territory into the park district. We only do that once a year. Um, and annual approval of prevailing wage ordinance. There's going to be annual updeck project and nominees. And uh, the, the perennial bid approvals. So it pretty well covers it. Kim, do you know how we're doing on, on the next crop of updeck? 
members? Do we have a lot of self-nominated people? Do we, we need to beat like bushes? We have started that. We have a few touches, but we'll probably okay. get, get working on that. Okay. <coughs> we can keep a list of anybody who's showed interest so they couldn't serve right, right, right. now, but we'll go back to them and then yeah. get anybody on that list. Yeah, just to, <coughs> just to tell the, the, the rest of the, the board, in the, in the old days, it was all recommendations, and there were essentially no, <coughs> no one even considered nominating themselves. And if they had, we would have probably thought, Eek. no thanks. And I believe this year's crop was perhaps all self-nominated. It makes it makes a remarkable mm -hmm. difference. I think I think it's a it's a really good way to do it. And even if you don't get all of the the <clears throat> number you need by self-nomination makes it a lot easier, but you get people that you know are interested from the start when you nominate themselves. And um, we had one kind of small lemon early on, but we haven't had much in the way of lemons since. It's it's been it's been a very useful change, yeah, I think. Good. The fear back in the day was that, that self-nominated people would have some kind of axe to grind and yeah. it would be just a one-issue yeah. kind of person and. Uh, that really hasn't turned out it much to be the case. Not, no. Yeah. No, I think I think it's a it's a it's a long enough job the, th the three years that that you know you might be kind of honing your axe down a little <laughs> a little thin at the end if you if you uh, thought you needed to go over for, for three years. But no, it's it's worked very it's worked very well and um, I'm, I'm thankful for it because I think that it's brought people in who have um, a greater commitment to finding out about the park district. Mm -hmm. Gives us a chance to learn new things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, moving on to committee reports. Uh, Finance committee did meet last Friday. Uh, most of what we discussed has been covered here to, in tonight's meeting, or is included in uh, in, <coughs> in the administrative report. Um, so I'm not sure that I have a whole lot to add to that. I mean, uh, I don't tell me if you, you want to. Say a little bit about the IDOT corridor there on the university. Oh. Yeah, that is really annoying. I mean, your report was good, but it's really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we're trying to do now is really make sure we look at least our properties at Wheel Park yeah. and how we want to, you know, as put forward. Obviously, we're keeping an eye on the properties next to us that are undeveloped. Um, if there's any way we could piece together some better configuration bicycle pedestrians through the park and over primarily to that intersection at Grace and University to be able to cross safely. Yeah. Real critical. Things we learned, uh, we, I think we knew, Derek and I, <coughs> but mid-street cro crossings just are not supported yeah. by local or state. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, just because I want to go that way doesn't mean it's safe to send people that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be fair to IDOT, they follow a lot of standards. They have, you know, all kinds of checklists that they have to complete. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to see some improvements. Um, I think it will be safer. Um, if there's any way we can work on the Gray Street and the Broadway intersection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So who controls, like, the timing of the lights? Because a simple fix is extending that pedestrian. Right. I mean, you can an able-bodied person can barely cross at race in enough time. Really? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's in oh, the works? Kidding. Okay. It, it is Ray Street, after all. Aptly <laughs> 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 named. <laughs> we could have a whole new recreation thing <laughs> just on Ray Street. Can we at least talk about that and make sure? Yeah, that yeah. Effort, second phase, future projects, work together. The fact that they're acquiring right away to make the path wider is really not, uh, it, it's great, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, more sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. A small plus. Okay, uh, moving on to policy committee, is there anything to report there? Uh, we haven't met, but we are trying to schedule time to meet in June. Right. I have a question. Oh. Um, the second poll that Alex sent out to try to find a date it was resulting in no um, a available meeting time again. And I didn't complete it yet. Is is there a better time 
for you guys than that lunch hour meeting time? Is there a different time we should try for the poll? Because we're going to have to do another poll. Other than the one that was sent out today? Because mm -hmm. there's not a time that everyone's available on that one that was sent out today. So is, is that noon hour still good? We should just keep trying for some more dates? Or should we try for a different time? In the summer, I have more flexibility. What about you, though? What about you, LaShonda? Is that lunch hour good, or? It just depends on what day. Okay. I mean, um. Could we schedule it before a board meeting? Does that? Does that work for you? That will work. Okay. Either the June study session or the J June board meeting. Yeah, or July meetings if you'll be in town. Because th there isn't necessarily a hurry to get this meeting. I just want to get a date scheduled so that we can have kind of a deadline for mm -hmm. getting all these policies drafted that we want to review with you. Um, so you want me to, maybe I'll send out the June board meeting dates and the July board meeting dates, and then you guys can select which ones work for you. And maybe we just probably only need like an hour. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Five o'clock, if you can, I mean, if that works, that would be more ideal for me, but yeah, I'll well, try to make it work with everyone else. Yeah, that, that after five works. Okay, so. thank you. Sorry yeah, to yeah, take no, up no. our meeting time with I didn't that, even but. fill it out yet, so okay. <laughs> that's good. Thank you. No, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> and I can move on to report on Urbana Parks Foundation, which as you all well know we had a joint meeting last week with the foundation um i think that was productive i hope that we continue to do that on a maybe a biannual basis uh well twice a year or <laughs> quarterly whatever we want um and then of course we've had the annual dinner um that most of everyone attended so i thought that was one of the the best <clears throat> joint meetings that we've had i thought there was it a was lot more discussion yeah, yeah i thought it was good Ad and hoc have not met. We're not ad hoc anymore. No. <laughs> well, we were then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. So we are down to old business, and uh, there is no old business to uh, conduct. And in terms of I new business, got. there's not uh, all the new business was done on the consent agenda. So we're what? to comments from commissioners. So I just have a comment. Um, one, I like this brochure a lot. I'll second that. However, um, there are no times on the neighborhood nights. <laughs> and lots of these events are not on the calendar on the website. So maybe that's forthcoming, but almost um, there are no neighbor like when I'm on the web and looking for the events, neighborhood mites are not coming up mm -hmm. on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and only the phone, only the search, I don't know, the search function as a summary is the only thing that works. Just a heads up. Um, mm. But like youth theater, um, yoga in the park, none of those things are coming up. And I'm leaving the search open if that's the way that you would do it. Like I'm not selecting categories. So maybe things are in progress, but just a heads up. I'll check yeah. on them. Because I do really like this. Yeah, I do too. It's a really good idea. I, but I did, it's probably just a major over, like accident. You looked at this 500 times and nobody noticed there was no times on neighborhood nights. And I know it's 6.30 to 8, but. <laughs> um, I, had to right? open up the, I had to open up the leisure guide and the leisure guide has the time in a separate call out box. And I imagine when they created that flyer, that call out box didn't yeah. make its way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, because so I didn't know if it was 6.30 to 8 or 6 to 8.30 or. Or what is it? Is it 6.30 or 6 yeah. to 8, 7.30? I or is six thirty to eight? Okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember either. I um, I wanted to <clears throat> to say that I thought it was a really good idea to pull the King Park neighbors about what they wanted to do with that basketball court slash tennis court. I think that's really a um, it's, it's it's just a great idea. Yeah. The work in progress, but just being at the King School with the kids was, was wonderful. Oh, I bet they that took was it really fun. seriously. I mean, yeah. they were like, look at each of the concepts, and it was, it was great. Really thinking it out. Yeah. And I like that. Can you tell us about the backboard basketball? Is that, is that what it was? Yeah. It, uh, so it, it's several different uh, basketball hoops that are oriented in different ways. The, the backboards are all sort of different. Yeah. So it becomes a, a challenge. 
and um, oh. there's actually different levels, and it's a kind of a progressive skill building type of basketball. It just shouts fun. All the kids were drawn to it. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's, it's really neat. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and I like the idea <clears throat> of it being more kid friendly because I think, as, as you stated, that it's that it's often the kids don't get to play because their older brothers and cousins are out there elbowing them off the court because they want to take each other on. And this is, yeah. Right. We, we also, uh, Kara had heard, because she, she's um, got a, a, she, a, a sister that, you know, that she works with, a little sister mm -hmm. uh, uh, at, ah. at King School, uh, that kids are jumping the fence to get in and play basketball. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that all the kids are just saying there's a real need for basketball in the neighborhood. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're excited yeah. to move forward. Good, good. Well, our general plan is, you know, work with King and continue to work back mm -hmm, to the other mm -hmm. sites where there's limited access. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the chain link fence is going up around Leal. I just no I noticed that. Oh, is it? Which is really, I mean, which has been a very open space for a really long time, but they've just started to, to put fencing up all around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is such good news. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Although it's difficult for us, I think. Yeah. In fact, we understand vandalism and concerns, but safety is above. It just seems that the neighborhoods pay the price doesn't seem fair, but nonetheless, we need to shift gear, and it's a different way of planning. We, we can adapt to that. Yeah, it's yeah. We're not, I still feel we're not getting our the best use of our resources. Yes. Really get that way, but I don't think there's another alternative, and I'm fully expecting to go to the adults in the King Park neighborhood. They'll fully support the idea and want to see it in place also, mm -hmm. so I'll be tired to get on with it. So, and I guess the upside, people are outside having fun, they're getting exercise, and Doing things together, so it's yep. worth it in the big picture. Yep. Is there anything in place for vandalism this year? I was recently reading there's been a lot of vandalism at Bloomington Parks. Um, just curious what the plan is for this year now that it's getting warmer. A couple things we always Mm-hmm. Two of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah. How much accelerant do you need? Probably not much. Well, what's in the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would think that the chemicals that they use in the in there are probably pretty. Fl I don't know. Oh. Uh, I, I think it was $2,800. It was in, the, it was in yes, the it was, accounts yeah. payable. Yeah, yeah I, I, and in your notes. That stings. That's Gosh. Um, we do have park security on a topic for up deck, um, so we want to at least bring it to people. Mm. If you're not talking about it mm -hmm. and it's happening, you're not. Right, right. We at least want to go to the kids up deck and make sure there are different types of things that happen where they have. Try real hard, stay on it, because um, it's all happens. But we'll have fewer potties out because the, the toilets will be opening in some right. of the parks, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. less vulnerability. When Corky and I met with our Urbana police to talk about schedules for this summer, we began talking about the idea of bike patrols, and there's some interest in that. So something that we, sh we should talk with them more about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've seen other communities where they've either instituted for the first time or re-upped it, and it's helped to reduce some of that. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. I ability to use any of our police funds to help support that or some other policing activity. I think we should have more discussion about that. Um, I, I, don't, I know we don't have that much money. We have some need to find a way to promote that or do something better. Yeah, I think it would be worthwhile looking at how much we spent on our play. I mean, four, over $4,000? Because we had two incidents, right? Yeah, the other one was about 2100 $2, but it was only one unit. Um, that was the one that was, it wasn't burned, it was um, but, right. carved in, and yeah. it was beyond repair, so we had to pay that out, too. Yeah. 
I think that's how much it was. That was a couple months <coughs> back. But that was even noted in the um, the underserved study, just sort of beyond there could be a double the multiple benefits coming out of from some a little bit more of surveillance or policing or whatever. I would say as long you know we Derek and I have met with the lieutenant and scheduled a lot of um, extra patrols throughout the summer. However, that is also um, because of the police force and the number of staff they have, uh, they open the shifts up and they pay overtime to the officers for, for those shifts, um, but they don't always get filled. Gotcha. Um, so I just want you guys to be aware we are always scheduling different things and as we see vandalism, we'll make a, um, some adjustments to that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it does rely on the fact that we have to get officers signed up for it, so. Mm -hmm. We're also, you know, anticipating things. So, for example, this year we're going to try to keep a closer on things around the 4th of July, make sure that police oh, are aware about our, our closure at sunset policies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Up note, you know, we used to deal with so much vandalism at Carl Park Pavilion, and now with that situation. In oh, yeah, and poor old Abe. That changes everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. make, make it a little progress, but... <laughs> It just pops up. You squish it down there, and it pops up over here. And mm -hmm. it's the nature of it. Any other commissioner comments? Okay, we've run out of our agenda, so I'll declare us adjourned.